So this is for the second half cycle. And uh, this one is for the first half cycle. So the first half cycle is from zero to uh, pi over omega n. The second half cycle is pi over omega n two, uh, two pi over omega n. So, uh, so how is for the full, for, for the complete um, uh, synchronization of the two positions? So, so we have this kind of motion. Again, for the next uh, complete cycle, it will go like this. And somewhere it is start to move like this. This is just a straight line. So this is when the vibration is below, the vibration amplitude is below mu n over k, then it will go continuously. So this is infinity condition. Motion stops when xn, the amplitude xn, means for n number of sides somewhere, when xn is less than or equal to mu n over k, then the, the it stops or ceases. Okay? Since the restoring force exerted by the spring kx will then be less than the frequency, the, the frictional force mu n. So that this is uh, the limiting condition to stop the vibration. Therefore, the number of half cycle required that uh, elapsed before the motion ceases, ceases means stops, is given by x naught minus r. r means uh, number of cycle. x naught minus r times mu n over k, which is less than or equal to mu n over k. This implies that r is greater than or equal to uh, x naught minus mu n over k is the whole over 2 mu n over k. So if this condition is satisfied, then uh, the motion will cease, or the uh, Coulomb friction model uh, will follow this kind of uh, rules. So this is the way how uh, this uh, energy dissipation take place in the Coulomb damping. So let's, let's consider some example. Find the free vibration response of a spring mass system subjected to Coulomb damping for the following initial conditions. The initial conditions given are x naught is equal to 0 0.5 meter, x dot of naught is equal to 0. Then mass of the uh, vibrating mass is 10 kg. The stiffness is 200 Newton per meter. And the frictional coefficient is taken 0 0.5. So this is a simple example. Uh, so we can solve it uh, based on the previous uh, equations. So when we come to solution, the equation of motion for such kind of uh, expression is mx dot dot plus mu n signalium of uh, x dot plus kx is equal to 0. Now. In such case, we use uh, some method known as Rank-Kutta method. So Rank-Kutta method is a kind of helpful method in uh, uh, solving such kind of nonlinear equations. This is kind of nonlinear equation. So we can use various methods to uh, express nonlinear equations. So in the... Uh, in this case, x1 is equal to x of t, x2 is equal to x1 dot, x1 dot. This is the uh, elimination method of Rang-Kutta method, okay? So it, let x2 is equal to x dot of t, and x1 is simply x of t. So this x2 is represented as f of f1 of x1 and x2, and x2 is equal to x2 dot means we are now differentiating or derivating this one. x2 dot means x dot dot of t. That means uh, we substitute simple, uh, means we are minimizing the equation to only uh, x and x dot only. So let x2 dot is equal to x dot dot of t, which is equal to minus or mu uh, signalium of x2 minus k over m x1, which is equal to f of 2, as f, f of 2 is a function of x1 and x2. So both of them are 
f1 and f2 are the function of x1 and x2. So in this representation or this Rankuta representation, uh, we substitute uh, equation two and equation three can be represented in matrix form now. This is the matrix form of representation. So the vector form x vector x dot is equal to f of vector f of x. This x is the maximum amplitude function where x vector is equal to x1 of t, x2 of t. f vector is equal to f1 of x1, x2, f2 of x1, x2 in the matrix. And x um, uh, vector of at time t is equal to 0 is given as x1 of 0 and x2 of 0. So in this matrix representation, we can represent. So which is simply represented as x, uh, yeah, the, the same uh, representation here. It is not such different. Then this kind of representation will be converted into MATLAB program. Once you give this representation to the MATLAB program, you can find easily uh, other parameters. So the MATLAB program for this uh, is um, used to find solution of equation number four. It means equation number four means this one. This is equation number four. So for that, what we can do, um, that percentage of uh, EX to, uh, actually this is just a MATLAB program which contains all the uh, important parameters. The initial conditions are represented here. Um, what we are finding with respect to time is represented here. You can float it and you can X level, Y level, means X level in our case is time and the Y levels is in our case is amplitude. So give some title for the example and then finally you can find some function of so this needs some MATLAB program actually, okay? So some functions, f is equal to zero of two and one, means we represent x1 and x2 as a function of one and the two. f1 is equal to x of two, f2 is equal to half, this uh, actually 9.81 is the g value, uh, instead of weight, um, we use mg. Okay, so again, so that is a synonym of x of two. x of two means x, x dot dot. So it is like that. So that maybe gives you uh, an expression like this. But this we can solve it with uh, <coughs> uh, analytically. Not only MATLAB, but in analytical method also we can solve it. So uh, uh, finally, we have noted the following characteristics of the system with Coulomb dumping. The first characteristics is the equation of motion is nonlinear with Coulomb dumping, but linear with viscous dumping. So this is uh, just comparison between viscous dumping and the Coulomb dumping. So viscous dumping is linear, but Coulomb dumping is nonlinear. The natural frequency of the system is unchanged with the addition of Coulomb damping. Reduce with the viscous. In the viscous damping, the natural frequency will reduce. Why? Because uh, omega uh, uh, d is equals to radical of one minus zeta square times omega n. So omega n is equals to omega d over ra over radical of one minus uh, uh, one minus zeta square. So because of that, uh, in the case of viscous damping, natural frequency uh, is decreasing. But in the case of uh, Coulomb damping, the natural frequency unchanged, it is remain constant. The motion is periodic with Coulomb damping, means there are a periodic decrement. The decrement in amplitude is periodically that it is uh, minus of mu n over k for every half cycle. Well, uh, non-periodic with the viscous damping, 
Be because that is logarithmic decrement. What we can observe from the um, discus damping is logarithmic decrement of uh, amplitude. But uh, in the case of Coulomb damping, it is just constant uh, decrement so that it is kind of ready. The system comes to rest after some times with Coulomb damping. That means once um, the amplitude, the maximum, maximum amplitude is less than uh, mu n over k, then the uh, vibration will cease. But in the case of uh, viscous damping, it remains uh, going because of uh, uh, some effect. Okay, so the amplitude reads linearly with Coulomb damping. Yes, it is linear because it is constant, having constant reduction of amplitude. But uh, the amplitude reduces exponentially with this viscous. Yes, it is exponential or logarithmic decrement. That is of the um, uh, e is a power of uh, minus um, that vibrate the uh, zeta. That we can relate it even with the damping. So this is the conclusion for uh, this topic. So in each successive cycle, the amplitude of motion reduced by the amount for mu n over k. For full complete cycle, the amplitude reduction is for mu n over k. In the case of uh, uh, this, uh, what we call friction damping. As the amplitude is reduced by an amount of for mu n over k in one cycle, that means one mic cycle means 0 to 2 pi over omega n time. So the slope of the enveloping straight line uh, is, uh, it is just minus of mu n omega n over pi k. That is the slope of the uh, curve at any point. Okay, So that is for the uh, hysteretic cycle. So no, not hysteretic cycle, but frictional cycle. Okay. So uh, this is all about the uh, Coulomb friction. So if you have any question. Hello? Okay. So let's go to forced vibration of single. Still what we are uh, looking is uh, just free vibration. Uh, so let's see the forced vibration. That is another uh, important condition in vibration analysis. Uh, okay. Maybe this is another uh, portion. We can uh, open another part. Yeah, aesthetics, high stresses now. So, uh, forced vibration uh, signal, okay, free vibration in the but uh, in the case of free vibration, there is no external uh, excitation. So, external excitation is considered zero. And the system is vibrate uh, due to it is system only. But when we come to uh, forced vibration, maybe this can be uh, harmonically excited vibration. So there is some excitation. Means. It means there is source of uh, external force. So if the source of external force is applied, look, this is a spring damper system with some force there is external force which is applied and it is vibrating in this direction. Okay, 
about its mean position. So if you take this free body diagram, the force is applied in this direction, Ft, and this is accelerating like this. So x dot dot is there, kx, cx dot. So this is the free body diagram of the system. So this is the physical system and the free body diagram. So the equation of motion for this type of is uh, mx dot dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f of t. f of t is the external force. <laughs> so if we consider uh, harmonic force, the solution is very easy. Okay, that means in most most of the case, if this f of t is harmonic, that means it is either of in terms of sine omega t or cos omega t we can express. Or another harmonic condition is the exponential, actually not harmonic, but this is exponential form. f of t is equal to f not e, the power of j omega t. Means j means the complex conjugate or the complex number system. So we can represent the harmonic motion in terms of sine and the cos. Okay? So f not is the maximum initial amplitude here. Here, what you see F naught is the maximum initial, the maximum amplitude, okay? So uh, then we can consider uh, Mx dot dot plus Cx dot plus Kx is equal to F naught E, uh, the, the rest to uh, J omega T, or sometimes you can use I omega T, okay? So this is equation of motion for harmonic excitation. So once the, this component of force is known, then the solution is easy because we can consider similar solution for uh, mx dot, dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to zero condition. That means homogeneous equation condition. The second order uh, differential equation, which is equal to zero means homogeneous. But now it is not homogeneous, it is uh, forced condition, so non-homogeneous equation. So, if we consider this type of equation, uh, this is the second order differential equation it is non-homogeneous and its solution has two parts. One of the parts is complementary function. That is called transient response. And it is the solution for the homogeneous equation as described before. Because if I fit, let uh, mx dot dot plus cx dot is plus kx is equal to zero is the homogeneous equation. Second order, uh, differential equation of homogeneous type. For, for that, we have a transient equations like x of t is equal to e raised to minus zeta omega n t the whole times C1 cos omega dt plus C2 sine omega dt. This is for the homogeneous part of the solution. And the second one is particular solution, which is steady state response. The steady state response uh, is for the particular solution. That means for the uh, forcing condition. So it is solution for non-homogeneous equation because the force or the excitation is harmonic with frequency w, we can expect uh, that the response or the solution is harmonic with the same frequency. So we have two components. That means x of t is equal to x complementary plus x particular. That is the solution. So it needs you, your knowledge of the linear algebra. Please refer your linear algebra course in detail to understand this thing. So x particular is equal to x e. Uh, this seems like the initial solution, f not e, uh, the rest to j omega t. Similar to that, x particular is equal to x or x times e j omega t, similar thing. If this is cos function, then this one will, will be cos. If this is sine function, then this equation will be sine. So we resemble it with the existing force function here. 
And sometimes force and the cause may be combined together here. So we combine such the combination of the two. So this X bar here is called the steady state response amplitude. Okay? And C1 and the C2 are some arbitrary constants which should be determined from initial condition. Okay, so the final response of such or this final solution for such kind of uh, equation is x of t is equals to x complementary plus x particular. Okay, so that means our solution contains e raised to uh, zeta omega m t the whole time c1 cos omega dt plus c2 sin omega t t plus x bar e the rest to j omega t. So that is the uh, full solution. Yeah. So this is for harmonically excited kind of vibration. And then once we substitute um, values for, uh, for the solution, then finally what we can get x bar is equal to f naught over k minus omega square m plus jc the uh, omega. So this is x bar, the solution for the maximum amplitude of the uh, particular solution. OK, so by uh, writing k minus omega square m plus jc uh, omega as means uh, these are the way how we can uh, represent uh, maximum amplitude condition. So uh, we'll discuss this thing once I arrive there to you personally, how we can get this equation and how we can relate this equation with this, okay? So, and then x particular is equals to uh, x bar, the norm of f naught over k, just take out k from here. Take out k from here. So it becomes omega square over uh, m over k here. Okay, so that k will be distributed over here, CW over k here. Then that k will go to top F naught over k. So F naught over k is a static deflection of uh, the given vibrating system, actually. Okay, so here it is one, here it is omega square over, omega square times M over k. So as you know, k over m is radical of natural frequency. It is natural frequency, okay? So from that, uh, it gives you f naught over k, one minus r means omega over omega m. Why? Because uh, if you substitute uh, m over k or k over m here, then it becomes omega square over omega m. square is the frequency ratio, r frequency ratio r. And this CW over k becomes 2 zeta r. 2 zeta r. OK. So that becomes, yeah, here 1 minus r square. r, r uh, Just r means omega over omega n. So that 1 minus r square, the whole square, plus 2 zeta r, the whole square. So this f naught over k is the static deflection delta naught. Okay, so we can rewrite it as uh, delta naught over this quantity. And the phase difference pi is equals to tan inverse of two zeta r minus, uh, over one minus r square. So this quantity over this quantity. That gives us the phase difference. Okay, so the total solution for equation of motion becomes xt is equal to xc of t plus x particular after. So this xc of t is the complementary solution. xp of t is the particular solution. So uh, together, we uh, put the full expression for the solution. x of t is equals to e raised to minus omega n t, the whole c1 cos omega dt plus c2 sine omega dt plus x bar, x bar means this quantity, f naught over k, uh, radical of 1 minus r square the whole square plus 2 zeta r the whole square, okay, times e raised to j omega t minus pi, and pi is here, pi is equals to tan inverse of 2 zeta r over 
one minus R square. So this is the complete solution. Once we get the complete solution, we have to determine C1 and the C2. And in order to determine C1 and the C2, we have to go to the initial condition. Okay. What is the initial condition? What is the displacement at the very beginning? What is the velocity at the very beginning? So uh, we have to know the initial condition of the motion. So once we know initial condition, then we can finally find the solution. Okay. Uh, for the force of uh, type of f of t is equal to f naught sine omega t, then the particular solution is x bar, the uh, norm of x bar sine omega t minus pi. This is the type of solution. As I told you at the very beginning, if the force, the harmonic force f of t is equal to f naught cos omega t, then the particular solution becomes uh, x bar. This x bar is still, I am telling you that, it is just F naught over K, the whole over radical of uh, one minus R square, the whole square plus two zeta R the whole square. Okay, so uh, that quantity. Then it is related with cos. So we can look, we can see for the, this quantity, this, this quantity, what it is. That means F of T. What is F of, is it this type? Is it this type or is it this type? Well, we have to differentiate that, okay? So <clears throat> this is the expression. The transient response x, uh, x, x complementary of t represents emotions that decays with time and can be neglected after certain times because that it is a response is easily decaying, okay? So the steady response x of PT is harmonic motion with constant amplitude and frequency of. This is forcing frequency. Look, this frequency is different from omega n. This is forcing frequency. Omega n is the natural frequency. So you have to identify this. Type. And R represents omega over omega n. The forcing frequency divided by the natural frequency gives us frequency ratio. Okay, so the term F naught over K is called static deflection or delta ST, or you can represent delta naught. And the ratio X bar over delta ST is called magnification factor. Okay, look how it comes. X bar is here, uh, norm of X bar. F naught over K is delta ST, then if I divide this equation by one over delta ICT and this one by one over delta ICT, it gives us uh, uh, delta ICT. Uh, let me, uh, this means X bar, this M indicates X bar over delta ICT. Uh, let me use pen here. Okay. Work. This is equal to x bar, the norm of uh, x bar over delta ST. Delta ST. So which is called magnification factor. So this magnification factor is different uh, for different value of zeta. So magnification factor is equal to one over radical of one minus R square, the whole square plus two zeta R. So don't forget this equation. So let's see the amplitude ratio Mx, uh, X over delta ICT versus omega over omega N. So look, this is the amplification factor or uh, uh, magnification factor or amplification factor the y-axis. The x-axis represents ratio of the forcing frequency omega 2, the natural frequency omega n. Okay. And there is a situation where we consider the renal resonance. Look, uh, if omega over omega n, or if r is equals to 1, that indicates the point of resonance. Look, 
this is the point of resonance. If it is exactly coincide with one, that is called resonance. You see, near to resonance, the amplitude of vibration becomes uh, infinity. It will go into infinity. And that is uh, when uh, zeta value is very small. That means zeta value very small means our damping is very less so that the system will vibrate in excessive amplitude. That excessive amplitude is uh, sometimes goes to infinity and will cause damage to the structure. And when we are increasing zeta value, look, when we are increasing zeta value, the amplitude decrease. This, this and this one represents for zeta 0 0.1. And this graph represents for zeta 0 0.3. As we increase and increase zeta value, the amplitude uh, of the amplitude ratio becomes small and small. And for uh, zeta mm, higher than, that means uh, 0 0.5, okay, there is zeta value one. You see, this is for zeta value one, and the beyond one, it will go down like this. Okay. The amplitude factor becomes small and small. So you can correlate your uh, amplitude ratio equation with omega to omega n, and this can easily be floated with the help of MATLAB program. Once you uh, insert the uh, ratio. Amplitude ratio m is equal to x uh, bar over delta SCT. And then uh, or r is equal to omega over omega n. Then the float, and then finally, the zeta value, the damping uh, ratio value, then it gives you this kind of graph for various uh, different values of zeta. Another re relation is the phase angle pi versus the frequency ratio. The phase angle pi versus, uh, uh, versus frequency ratio. For that, you can find, um, uh, look, 0 degree, 30 degree, 60, 90, uh, 120, 180, and then uh, 50 and 80 for every 330 angle difference. And then, uh, from zero to some three, omega over omega n, or R value zero to three, you can float this kind of graph in your MATLAB for various value of uh, zeta. For zeta value very small, look, if zeta is zero, this is the graph. Can you see? This is a graph, a straight line at 180 degree. That is only for the zeta value zero. Here also, this is for zero zeta value. You can find this line. Uh, for higher zeta value, uh, you can see uh, again, yeah, zeta value zero, it is a straight line like this. Straight, straight, straight. This is for zeta value zero. As zeta value increase from zero to 0 0.05, you can find this type of graph this graph, okay? Uh, as you increase zeta value, you can find this graph. Again, for higher zeta value, again for higher, for critical damping condition, zeta is equals to one. This, this graph indicates zeta is equals to one condition. It is like this, okay? So these are, uh, the graphical representation of uh, magnification factor M and the phase angle pi with respect to uh, frequency ratio and the damping factor. So what we have observed in damped forced vibration system, this is called damped forced system. Uh, for zeta is equal to zero, the system reduces and becomes undamped. For any amount of zeta greater than zero, the amplitude of vibration decrease. Uh, that is reduction in the magnification factor. This is, um, 
And for the case, uh, R is equal to zero. R is equal to zero means uh, omega over omega n is zero. The magnification factor equals one. Okay, that means we can go here. Exactly at R is, R is zero. R zero means omega over omega m, n is zero at this point. At this line, it is the amplification factor is one. That means x over x delta t is equal to one. That means x is equal to delta s t. So this is the point. So the amplitude of the forced vibration uh, approach zero when the frequency ratio approach to infinity. So if frequency ratio is going uh, very far, so the amplitude of forced vibration uh, approach to zero, that is the meaning. So, uh, yeah, so this is uh, uh, what we have discussed today. Mm, anyways, let's, let's summarize some important points. Okay, variation of displacement when uh, with frequency. Okay, so we have this equation F naught over k rad, uh, over the whole over radical of one minus r squared the whole square plus two zeta r the whole square, which is the solution set response amplitude. Okay, um, no, this is just um, because of it is non uh, homogeneous uh, component. Another uh, at low frequency r approaches zero, then x bar over f naught over k, x bar which is equals to uh, nearly equal to f naught over k. That means delta s t, which means the displacement is stiffness control. No, how we can control uh, at lower value of r means uh, near to zero value, we can make stiffness control to mitigate the damp uh, vibration. This is the way how we can uh, mitigate vibration so that we can increase stiffer material for such case. For the value, um, R is greater than one. R is greater than one, than one means for this region, for this region, if R value is 1.2, 1.6, like that, then it is mass control. We can increase mass in the system. If R is less than this one, it is near to zero. So around here, the R values, we can make stiffness control, okay? That is the control mechanism for what we are designing our structure for vibration. So, which means we can, for R greater than uh, one, mass control is appropriate. R near to zero, stiffness control is appropriate. At the resonance point, the point where uh, 